Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the subdivision surface modifier. This modifier is a great way to smooth out your mesh as you're working in a non-destructive way. Let's get into it. The code for the subdivision surface modifier, or subsurf, is based on the doctoral work done by Ed Catmull and Jim Clark back in the late 1970s. Ed Catmull would later go on to be one of the founders of Pixar and eventually the president of Walt Disney and Pixar Animation Studios. Jim Clark, on the other hand, would go on to found Silicon Graphics Incorporated, or SGI, and was the co-founder of Netscape. So these guys are kind of a big deal in 3D. While we don't want to get into the weeds of how subdivision surfaces work, you can think of it much the same way that curves work. Your control points help define a path that's smooth, but instead of your control points being along a line, they're vertices on your mesh. There's a video by the YouTube channel Numberphile on this topic if you're interested further. Links in the description. Suffice it to say, adding a subsurf modifier to an object subdivides each face by four and smooths out the results. Subsurfing a cube makes it almost a perfect sphere. When you add a subdivision surface modifier, you have two main controls, the viewport and render levels. You can set these differently from each other because higher level of subdivisions will take up more memory and can bog down your scene. In cases like that, you can set your viewport levels lower than your render. This will maintain viewport performance. There's also the optimal display option. This option is for wireframe mode. When it's checked, the wireframe will only show the wires of the original object and not all the subdivisions. When unchecked, it will show all of the subdivisions. This can make the difference between the wireframe mode being usable or not for subdivided objects. Under the advanced settings, the Use Limit Surface option fixes an old issue with Subsurf. If we add a Subsurf to this cube, and turn this setting off, you will see that as we increase the levels, the cube gets smaller until it reaches a point where more subdivisions don't change the size anymore. This can really be a problem if you have your viewport levels set at one level and your renders set at another. Your objects could end up a different size than you expect. Let's take this for instance. In this scene, this cube has a subdivision surface set with level 1 on the viewport and level 6 on the render. Let's see how that looks. As you can see, even though this sphere was touching the ground on level 1, it now isn't on level 6, because all of those edges have been rounded out. We can see that by increasing our viewport levels to match the same as render. It no longer touches the bottom. Here I've added a subdivision surface modifier to this third cube, set its viewport levels to 1 and its render levels to 6, but I've said to use the limit surface. Now if I move this sphere so it's aligned with this box, and I render, even at level 6, it stays at the same position. The Use Limit Surface uses the shell of a very highly subdivided object to place the vertices of the lower subdivided object, so it will be as small as the object is going to get when you add the subdivisions. Because of the benefit of this option, Use Limit Surface is turned on by default. There's also an option for quality for the Use Limit Surface, but I've never needed to adjust this setting. The UV Smooth option gives you the ability to choose how UV maps will be smoothed along with your mesh. Here I have this cube with this particular UV map. By default, UV Smooth is set to keep corners. However, I don't see what the UV map is doing in my editor. I have to apply this subdivision surface to see what happens with the UV map. As you can see, some parts of my UV map have been smoothed while others have not. Let's take a look at what the settings actually do. Here I have the same cube replicated three times. I applied a subdivision surface modifier to each one and changed the UV smoothing option to none, keep corners, and all, and then applied those modifiers. When UV smoothing is set to none, you can see that the UV map is simply subdivided and no vertices are moved or smoothed. If you've chosen the Keep Corners option, you'll see that outside corners are kept sharp, while inside corners, like here, and the inside of this cutout, are smoothed. In the case of All, every corner is smoothed, both internal corners and external corners. So the edges of my UV map have been smoothed out 
both here and here, and on the inside of this and on these islands. For non-manifold meshes with open edges, the boundary smooth option will let you change how the edge cases are handled. For instance, if I add a subdivision surface modifier to this object, you'll see that all of the edges are smoothed. That's because by default, boundary smooth is set to all. However, if I change this to keep corners, just like in the UV smoothing, all outside corners will remain sharp, while inside corners will be smoothed. The Use Creases option will take edges with creased weights into account when smoothing. So for instance, with this object, if I add a crease weight, then these edges will be marked sharp and these ones will remain smooth. If I take this option off, those crease weights will be ignored. By default, Use Custom Normals is off when doing a subsurf. However, if you've added split normals to your object, you can turn this option on to take those new normals into account. In addition to the Catmull Clark subdivisions, there's also Simple Mode. This mode subdivides the faces, but doesn't do any smoothing. For instance, it doesn't look like this has been subdivided at all. But if I go into Wireframe Mode and turn off Optimal Display, you'll see that the object is being subdivided. If I apply this subdivision, you'll see that my object is now heavily subdivided. The simple subdivision mode can be very handy when you want to add geometry to an object without changing its shape before doing something like a displace modifier. One last thing. Since adding a subdivision surface is something you're going to do quite often, there are shortcuts to add them more quickly. Instead of going to the Modifier tab, clicking Add Modifier, and choosing Subdivision Surface, you can select your object and press Control-1 through Control-5. The number you choose will add a viewport level subdivision surface, so pressing Control-2 will add a viewport level 2 subdivision surface set at Render Level 2. Pressing Control-5 will add a Viewport Level 5 Render Level 2 subdivision surface. I hope this rundown of the subdivision surface modifier has been helpful and shown you how to use the advanced features. If you've been enjoying my videos or finding them helpful, click the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to chat outside of YouTube, make sure to join our Discord server. The link is in the description. Anyhow, thanks for watching the video, I hope it inspires you to make something awesome, and I'll see you next time.